Hello, I'm your host, Dan Rojas, and I have one of the strongest Sterling engines I've ever owned right here. This was from the previous video that I did. Unfortunately, I broke this engine when I was trying to hook it up to a generator. I was trying to uh, test the watt output on a DC on the DC side to see what it could do. When I hooked this up, I actually, the phone rang, I went and answered the phone, and I left this in concentrated sunlight, and the sun moved a little bit, and it actually came down the side of the engine and burned the the base, which is really no big deal. The engine was overheated, so I gave it a little crank, burned my fingers in the process, and it started to run, but then it actually locked up and I heard this really loud pop inside, and ever since then, the flywheel just spins freely. I planned on doing a video where I take this apart, but I was a little apprehensive because I was afraid I wouldn't get it back together because there's obviously some seals that if they pop out, you're probably not going to be able to just go to the store and buy them. So since it's broken, we don't have any choice. So I've loosened these bolts up with an Allen wrench and I'm going to take these off and I'm going to mark the side of this so I know just in case there's a little difference that way we know where it goes back so there's the displacer and there's the problem this simple the displacer pop loose well, I may not take this thing totally apart. Anyways, here's the, the displacer. If you notice there, there is a nice, uh, there is a nice O-ring, a big O-ring, which is probably, would be difficult to replace. So I'm going to see what's down here. I'll actually get you a good view of this. If you look down there, there it's uh, on a swivel. So this just uh, mounted to there. It had. It looks like there was some glue in there. So they appeared to use some sort of thread lock because there's a little bit of orange on there. So actually white down on the inside. I'm going to get these off. Make sure they're all the same size so there's nothing fancy about them and they are all the same size well that's obviously sealed on there because that's not just popping off freely I can actually see an adhesive down the side there are four portholes that go down so it's a very very small amount of air that goes down through there all right so I've got these tightened back down what I'm going to do is show you the, uh, I'm going to take the camera off the tripod and show you the down inside this engine. So the part that actually holds the displacer, you can see the glue that I was talking about. It's on a swivel in there. And I'm going to put this all the way down and show you. Here is the displacer and you're going to notice that it is a little bit it's smooth here it's a little bit rougher here and there is about a 32nd of an inch width this is bigger than this so this fits in there Let's see if we can get that all the way down and this actually is pretty close to a perfect seal. It's not perfect, but it's a really good seal right there. So the tolerance between these two, this is the top cap. It is almost a perfect fit. And that's probably the secret to the power of this engine is that there is very, very, very little air transfer. Most of the other Sterling engines that I have, this is probably three to four times uh, the airspace between the two. So, you can see that this actually heated up. Still in good shape. Now it looks like this was a steel cap put on top of there. There's a reason for that, I would assume, because it prevents you from having to do a weld up here. This particular engine, uh, that weld at the end broke so I've 
attempted to weld it back but it's not working very well so I'm probably going to do the same method with a cap on the end so if we look inside you can see that there is uh, a bearing and you can see how that connects together so that reduces friction dramatically that's a nice bearing that it's on looks probably a little bit bigger than a roller skate bearing well, maybe it is a roller skate bearing and if we look inside you can see the power piston that's just uh, machined to fit pretty snugly doesn't uh, I don't believe that there's any rings or anything on there because it would have probably a little bit more drag than that alright so what I did was I took some super glue and I put it down in there and it worked really well you just there's no way I can get that off now so I'm going to put this on there and see if we actually get our compression back. So i got to line those lines up. There we go. So there's virtually no between the displacer and the actual outer bore. And it's got, it comes right to that edge. And then when we put this cap over it, You notice I'm going to spin it and put this on there and you'll see it come to a stop just from the, see how just that little, that is this gasket doing its magic. It's still in good shape actually, so that's a good thing. And that's, that's what you want to look for with a powerful engine like this. You don't want it to spin freely, you want it to have this effect. And you can hear it kind of farting. So I'm going to tighten these back down and hopefully we can get this out and test it. So I was able to simply fix this engine. The displacer just popped loose and right now it's just put on with super glue. But um, that should hold it. There's no way I could get it off once I put it together. I'm going to be testing this engine in future videos to try to get a true power output of this versus just an estimate. And also I'll be showing you this engine this is a very very simple engine this, this one's a little bit more complicated this one has a lot more power but this one has a very interesting internal displacer that offers a lot more surface area i'm your host dan rojas thank you for watching and enjoy our videos i get questions a lot of times from people who ask why don't we do more videos using the sun in the summertime and we live in central florida so this is one of the drawbacks to living in central florida from about mid-june to probably mid-august we deal with this every single day now normally i'm not out in the rain this is a tropical system so there's not a lot of lightning with it but we normally get these afternoon thunderstorms and we have cloud cover just about every day we get a, an hour or two of sunlight and it's really hard to get everything set up working between the clouds so that's why we don't we do a lot of night videos if you look at any of our videos over the past uh two years from about this time up until maybe beginning of September. Most of them are night videos, aqua lens videos. We do get a little sunshine, but last year we had 114 days straight, starting in June all the way up beyond September, actually, where it was like this almost every single day.